Not that you need an introduction, but please introduce yourself. <laughs> My name is Cynthia Nunn. Cynthia, it's been a long time coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to know what took you so long to do an interview on Kev Mac videos. Ah, I, I don't know. You know, different things. I, I watched a lot of your interviews and I, I wanted to be ready. I know that you got a, a super ch a YouTube channel, you know, and a, a lot of your people are really, uh, you know, uh, uh, active with you. So I'm like, okay, it's time for me to do Cab Mac. For the six foes on spokes on. For the OGs that did a dime Came back around on parole For the homegirls with the scrap game Little homies that gang bang From Pelican Bay to YA Rearrange your mind frame Yeah, I know what you've been through uh, Shit, you had to go tent to Your mama gave birth on the turf I, know I was the founder I created Conan Parker in my mother's garage I had a lot of, you know, lifting weights And I was on sport They started calling me Big Miz Original stutter box Eastside fire who's pepper Little bitch up me City Gangsta Bloods this is only the beginning. Before I continue, how's your brother doing? My brother is great. He's doing great. Uh, talk to him. Uh, seem like every three or four days. Okay, that's good to hear. Um, so, I want to know, when did your family, first of all, where's your family from? Your parents? Oh, my mom is from uh, Louisiana and my dad is from Alabama. When did they move to California? Ooh. Oh, probably, I think uh, when my mom and were probably younger, because my mom went to school and uh, uh, she went to Jordan and Watts. Uh, actually, we came up out of Watts, but she went to Jordan. She may have went to Markham. Uh, I'm not sure okay. uh, when they first touched down here, though. But so you was born here. Yes. When did you guys move away from Watts? Uh, we moved away in the summer. I think it was the summer of '67 or '68. And that was to Compton? Yes, we came to Compton. And where did you guys land at in Compton? Uh, we landed in Compton on Bradfield, right across the street from Luther's Park. Okay. Would you happen to know what type of jobs your parents had? My mom worked at the Wassell Foundation up until her passing. Uh, she passed away in December of 93. My dad, uh, they wasn't together at that time, but my, my real dad is a singer. He sings with the Coasters. And my stepdad, who played a big part in my life, he uh, he was a, a fighter, a boxer. Did you box profession? Yes. Well, actually, both of them, my stepdad and my dad, both were boxers wow. and fighters. Okay. So we already know the numbers. So, yeah, you hands. already know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to let Melly Mel, since he knows Compton real well, he knows a lot of pot rules. I'm gonna let Mel take over. Man, <laughs> I was trying to figure out what you was waiting on. <laughs> nah, nah, for real. But Professor Betty Bell here, and I'm here, long time friend. And first of all, if we could just right now, Cynthia, just give a moment of prayer for all the brothers, whether they was Bloods, Crips, whatever. Can we just pray for them and their lives and, and the things that, that happened over the years throughout the time? Can we just say a little prayer for them? And I know you're the person who can do it because I know you're a very good praying woman. I am a good, good praying woman, but I, I don't never want to not pray. I, I, you know, I just thank God for, uh, I mean, I thank God for bringing us all this for, and uh, I, I thank God for everybody. You know, I, mm -hmm. I'm always praying, uh, you know, came up in a prayer, prayerful house. It might not seem like it, but I have. So I just want to ask God to uh, touch all those that lost somebody, whether it was Pyru, Blood, Crib, Dama, whoever, uh, you know, touch those families of uh, them. Um, you know, touch all, touch us, Cat Mac, it's, it's uh, channel, you know, you, 
maniacs, mackheads, and the whole world. You know, I'm always Please praying. Yes, I'm always praying. Because I never seen nobody pray on nobody's channel, so I thought KM Videos would be the first to have of people course. do the prayer. Of course. And I appreciate that. Of course. So, let's get to it. Let's right. tap in right now right, in your section. Go. First of all, I want to talk about that shirt. Yo, oh, Mount my Rushmore. Shirt. Oh, yeah. Yo, Mount my, Rushmore. My Mount Rumor. No, Mount yeah, Rumor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah, get into that. Yeah. Don't get it confused. Please, back <laughs> in. Yeah, my homeboy had got this shirt made. They were doing a, I think it was a baseball game at uh, Gonzalez Park. Uh -huh. So he like, sent. I need some pictures. And he actually wanted a picture of Tam, but I knew it was hard to get a picture of uh -huh. Tam, and I didn't want to give up that picture, so... Larry Tan Watts, born in the sip. Back in the day before the bloods and the crips. Family moved to Compton and then the dog flip. Co founded the West Side Pyro, they on deck. War started with the cop of Crips in 72. Him and LB was shot on Central Avenue. But this is Pyro Street, nigga, stand tall. Tan was shot in the lab, but he was still cool. And now we going blow for blow with the grandies. Tan was a fighter with his hands, he's a champ, B. Representing for the Pyro. Tam was a G, chillin' with putting they shoot, should be dead up on the street. Tam Watts, Pyro Street, represent the red rats, he's a Pyro chief. Throw the peas up for this Pyro heat, CPT is in the building, this is Pyro Street. Uh, Tam Watts, Pyro Street, represent the red rats, he's a Pyro chief. Uh, I wind up giving him, which is Puddin', Lil Vince, my brother China Dog, LB, and Randy McCullough, the kid. Kid, yeah, you know, the kid, yeah. Man, the kid was a real good friend, yeah. so we yeah. had a great relationship, right? Good dude, good yeah, dude. very good dude, very right? Good dude. Right, right. Okay, Cynthia, so now we got the Mount Rumor out of the way, so let's tap in on a little bit of history. You said you moved on Bradfield in 68, yeah, 68, 67, 68. Okay, so August the 14th, 1968, there was a helicopter traveling from LAX and en, en route to Disneyland, right? But had some engine problems, right. and the helicopter landed about 50 feet within Lutus Park. Where were you at that moment? It crashed in Lutus Park. The helicopter, the helicopter yes. that crashed in the park, yeah, yes. at the park. We was at it was a. I mean, we were because you know my house is across the street from Lutus Park, uh -huh. so we were maybe in the house though, when we ran to the park. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you you were able to, as a young girl, you was able to witness all the yes. body parts and all the people yeah. that was yeah. There yeah. and I mean that was like man, because I lived in Fruit Town and rode my bike all the oh, way down. Yes. Yeah, yeah, because it started tumbling like I'm, and I I had no idea that it was gonna land in Lutus Park. Yeah, but yeah, I was just following. That was it. crazy. Yeah, that was real crazy. Yeah. Okay. Then I got a second part of history, and it's a guy. His name is uh, Fred Fred Pop Looters. Fred. Pop I'm gonna give you the history, right? Okay, uh -huh. He was a he was an art teacher at Compton High and an art teacher at um, Compton College, right? Uh -huh. And he's the guy that the part is named after. And guess you wouldn't believe this. Where did in a million years you wouldn't come up there? Guess where he lived? Where? Magdib. For real? <laughs> yes. That's crazy. Yeah, he lived wow. on Magdib. Yeah, and he was a um, that's what the park is named after him in, in, in his memorial, the name of the park, Lutus Park. And the guy named is Fred Pop Lutus. Oh, he was an art teacher at Compton High and also at uh, Compton College. Wow. So now that we got all that out the way, let's get right into it. Uh, uh, first, I want to start off. When I first met you, right, mm -hmm. it had to be 71. Yeah, 70, 71, right? Uh -huh. White Moxes. Levi's, <laughs> big earrings, big hair yeah. with the auburn patch. Yeah. Am yeah. I correct? Yeah. 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 I love so the I'm white thinking, moccasins. you know, I'm going to school with you and I'm thinking, like, man, there's going to be some problems with this lady. <laughs> and I didn't know where the problem was coming from, but it just, you had such a big spirit, a big energy that a lot of kids, and, and, and I always talk about, like, say, um, uh, how can I put this? There's certain people, right? Mm -hmm. Like Stanley Pitts, mm -hmm. right? Mac Thomas, right? Mm -hmm. They'd have ever known none other than that, like yourself, Cynthia Nina. So mm -hmm. people with the full name, 
I always like paying attention to them because there was something about them where people just didn't give them nicknames. They just yeah. say, okay, they come that Stanley Pierce or they come that Matt right. Thomas or they come Cynthia Lutz. So as a female, I put you in that category of a person, you know, because that means somebody that was like, you really didn't want to deal with them in certain cer certain circumstances because right. you know that name right you know that name say i don't know if you get what i'm saying but i know what you're saying yeah, yeah. so i, I wanted to talk that. about that so and there's so many things we could get to but and thirdly this is what i wanted to know before icky dawson well let me ask you the question mm -hmm. There's been rumors said, and this came from AC Bobby Louis, that Vicky Dawson introduced Ray, your brothers, and all of them to the West Side. Can you confirm that? I can't confirm that. I don't. I don't. I don't remember uh, that part. I mean, maybe he knows something. I don't. Okay, know. maybe no. No worries there. Right, no worries right. there. I don't remember. But that. what I do want to say is that before you guys were Pyrus, you were Pyru you were Blue Park Hustlers. I think they say that about my older brother who rests in peace, uh -huh. uh, who was a U.S. boy, but they probably was Luna Park hustlers. I mean, I, they was hustling basketballs. That's all I know. <laughs> I don't remember no money or nothing, you know. I know they were basketball coaches, you know. They were playing uh, always at the park. Uh -huh. Gym was always open, you know. They okay. played basketball. Uh, uh -huh. They had teams, matter of fact, like Elliot, and a lot of them were on their basketball teams and stuff. So uh -huh. a lot of them came up playing basketball. Um, whether they call themselves, I thought they were just called uh, the Park Boys. Maybe people put Looters Park in front of it. I always just thought it was the Park Boys. Uh -huh. The know, Park so. Boys. And that yeah. was before they embraced the uh, Pyro, right? Right, right. Because okay. right. I actually played, you remember Tony Flanagan? Yeah, they had, yeah. They had the departments. Baseball, yeah. with him, you know, their father, his father was the coach. Yeah. Right? So I spent a lot of time right there, you know what I mean, before I, all this other stuff came about to where people started to buy in the neighborhoods, right. up the streets, and sides of town, or whatever. Yeah. So, but for the most part, I went to school with everybody. Right. You know? So that's how I came to know you, your brothers, your sister, and your family. Right. Of course. Right. So, okay, let's get into it, Cynthia. Clifford Ray Johnson, February, I believe it was February 10th or February 9th. Mm hmm. In 1973, was attending a party, and and for the record, was he your boyfriend at that time? Yes. And um, I don't know exactly what happened, and, and we don't want to speculate on anything. But there was something that happened in the party, and he lost his life basically right. at a very early age. Yeah. Yeah. But what I would do want to say, and I don't know how him and Curtis Patrick fell out of favor with one another, but I do know that Curtis later on, you know, he was he started off this. Pyro. And then he would yeah. Oaks Park. Yeah. So I don't know if that was translated between them two or it's just that, you know, because everything happened at a party. And I don't remember, was the streets Cook Acre or? Yeah, Cook Acre. Cook Acre. Yeah, Cook okay. Acre. Um, if you don't want to talk about that, that's yeah. fine. No, I'm, I'm cool. It was Cook Acre. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, I remember. I remember getting the call and uh, uh, we were at uh, his mom's house. Miss Johnson lived on uh, Bradfield and Tucker. And I remember getting a call and they were saying uh, Ray had got stabbed at a party. And we went over there and, I mean, you know, Ray didn't make it. But, uh -huh. you know. But I it took him, like, I think he lived for a whole day, though, right? I don't remember. Uh -huh. I don't remember. Uh -huh. I just remember he didn't make it. I'm not sure. I don't remember. And his brothers was Russell and Pee Wee. Yeah. And sister Deborah, Big Ann. Uh, Deborah's still living. Ann, rest in peace. Pee Wee, rest in peace. Russell's still living, yeah. They were about, they family was about that life as well. Deborah, Big Ann, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So, Tim and Wiley Junior High in Dominguez, did you ever go to Dominguez? Yeah, I went to Dominguez. So, how would those, how did those schools impact your life and, and what did you get out of them that you utilize today as a person? You know what I mean? There was some good and bad and everything, but I'm trying to say, it, was there anything that you took away from that time to become who you are today? Mm. Whaley was, I, like, I ran track from elementary till Whaley. Whaley was kind of like when, I think, when we first started getting off into the banging life, uh, not the first year of Whaley. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, I was smart. I was a uh, straight A and B student up until the gang banging part, but uh, I just know it's different now. You know, I didn't. Uh, only thing I can remember is shit, not taking this damn gang banger with us. You know, right, 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 right. You know, other than that, I mean, school was our school was cool. You know, my uh -huh. my mother, we had to go to school. You know. Would it be fair to say that Miss Skinner and Miss Holcomb had a uh, Miss Skinner, impact yes. on your yes. life? Yes, they did, and as well as my mom, because she worked with so many different people. I think we got kicked out. Uh, well, I know I got kicked out of Whaley, and I had to go to Drew. And it was Mr. Adams and, and Mr. Christian, I believe. Yeah, and I had to go to Drew. Uh, I think we were, we had a fight. We first heard about Captain Crunch and the Funky Much. It was these girls. I don't know if they were from Car where they was from, uh -huh. but we heard about them and they supposed to I carry. remember that name. Captain yeah. Crunch and the Purple Gang. Yeah, and they came and I think they went to Dominguez though to jump on some of our homegirls and we left school and then we came back. We was already in the fight mode, so we came back fighting and they kicked, uh, I think it was me, Sandra Mar, Ricky Pitts. They kicked some of us out of school and I wound up going to school in the, uh, at Drew and uh, I know we was going to the Pike a lot, you know, we wound up getting down there fighting. And when I went back to school, you know, they give you that little stamp when I went back to school. This uh -huh. dude was like, was you at the Pike? And I'm like, no. And he was like, let me see your hand. I had that stamp. And he was calling the girls to come beat me up or whatever. So I'm like, I called my mama, like, she bring everybody up here, you know. But yeah, you know. Glad you mentioned Mama Nan because Mama Nan was like, she was involved in you guys' life. I could tell that because she was really concerned to what you was into or, or the people you was hanging around and she right. was like, she was around in that band, right? Yeah, my, my mom, and I do want to set the record straight as far as my mom, she didn't uh, condone what we did. She just was one of them moms that never put her kids on blast in front of people. Like she went off on us, we got in trouble, you know, we got, you know, we got in trouble, but uh, I mean, we still did what we did, you know. Uh, we were brought up getting whoopings or whatever, you know. But she wasn't one of them moms, how they be saying, oh, she was the power room mother. No, she wasn't no power room mother. My mother was very involved in when banging first started and trying to stop a lot of stuff. That's how we were able to meet. Her and Bob Simmons was real close. Yeah, her and my mama, Bob Simmons. I can tell you so many times she'd leave that Watts Hill Foundation and we pull up at that big red house. We like, shoot, we ain't about to go in there with them crips, you know? <laughs> but, uh, she was really involved in the community. I, I meant to bring her badge, but she was one of the uh, first moms that worked with the uh, first black mayor, Doris Davis. She was on the commission board. She, We met Tookie, Jamel. They came to our house. Like My mom tried to stop this stuff before it got as deep as it was, even though you know, my brother. She was a started, community actor. Yeah, she was she was very she involved. Used to come in over there and talk to us. Yeah, yeah. My mom, she would she pull was, up on yeah. us literally and talk. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, my mom was very uh active uh in doing this. She just she just always had her kids back though, you know. So you know. Okay. And so, for the ahead. record, my mother never like never bought nobody no leather coat. Okay. She never did. <laughs> I I uh I mean, I got a lot of respect for Turtle because that's my that's my dog, that's my boy. But my mother never bought nobody no leather coat. What what? My, if my mother would have bought a coat, then I wouldn't have had to tell the homegirls to go over there and holler at, at the homies, you know. So right. it was a thing where somebody was gonna go to court against my brother, and I'm like, shoot, we don't want them to go to court. So uh, me and my homegirls got together. We none of us was ugly, you know. Then so we went. So y'all was cuties on duty. Yeah, we was on cuties on duty, and they were because they didn't go to court. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, but. Yeah. Then me and Turtle still wind up being cool, you know. It right, started right. off as us going over there. I knew Turtle was a right. shot caller, so right. I'm like, well, you got to get to the shot caller, and then he can tell them don't go to court, you know. But uh, she never bought nobody no coat. Okay. So how good was Bob Simmons and, and, and Mama Nan's relationship? I mean, I know we close. touched on it, because yeah. Bob Simmons was like community activist, yes. but he also was, he was a money guy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know what I mean? He yeah. saw numbers and, and he put houses throughout the city where he did um, a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he did. He did a free lot. Free lunch program. I see yeah. free lunch over there. Yeah, he did a lot. They were real close because at uh, 
my mom just knew some of everybody. And then, you know, her being one of the first ones to work uh, for the Wassell Foundation when they first built it or whatever, she was just involved. She was like a community health agent where they would go to houses and take food and, you know, stuff like that. So she was uh, involved in Watts, in Compton. You know, she was really involved. Okay, cool. Uh, I got a few names for you. And, and when I go through my little names, you feel, feel, feel free to... Um, explain or talk about those individuals individually and just kind of give a, a a characterization of the individuals and what you thought about them and who who they were and how they represented okay uh -huh. uh, first i'd like to start with daryl savage volcano big jeffrey time bomb stanley Pitch, <laughs> i can't remember them all Marcus one time, you gotta one time. You got one at a time. <laughs> no 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 i'm just gonna name them all uh -huh. and then we come back okay. and then I, i'm gonna pick a couple out okay. but i just wanted to name them all part-time herman jr randy mcquiller donald mcquiller bojangles smiley willie t little george bartender new york fire killer Shamrock, Jimmy Cash, Butler, <laughs> Stephen Wolf, Lug and Jug. Okay. Now, I want to I want to hear specifically about Daryl Savage, Volcano. Okay, Daryl Savage. <laughs> Savage was the homeboy who he, who he lived exactly across the street from the pod. Like our house is is on the front part, and then Savage House is right here. Savage was a homeboy. He was a beast. That's why he had the name Savage, you know. Mm. I mean, you know, sometimes I see in the, in the comments people say, you know, that we're not speaking enough on him, but it's not a kiss and tell something, you know. I don't, all I can tell you is he was a homeboy. He was about that life, you know, and uh, he represented Lutus Park to the fullest, you know. Mm. He got killed out of town, you know. He went out of town, but that was a homeboy. Let me see. This, this is Daryl Savage. That's you know, Daryl Savage. Savage. There yeah, you go. That's Savage right there. Yeah, that's the okay. homeboy. You had yeah. you know, Slow me down there because, you know, I get carried away and get to going too yeah, fast. Savage. This is Daryl Savage. That's another picture of Savage. Yeah, yeah. This is the homeboy. Okay, yeah. cool. So, my next person, and, and if, if anybody that you want to speak on, we can skip them up, but um, Volcano. Volcano was another one of the homeboys. Volcano lived on um, Burris. And uh, another, he's another beast. He was a homeboy. You know, when you think about them guys, you listen to the name. Volcano erupts. Daryl Savage. Savage was a beast, you know. So, Volcano is a, you know, a lot of, he got killed also out of town. A lot of them, you know, started going out of town afterwards, you know. But uh, uh, Volcano was a, he was a beast. Even though we was trying to get his picture over there, but you know, I got so many pictures, but Volcano, he was, he was a beast as well. Okay, what about Bojangles? Mr. Bojangles. Bojangles. Bojangles is a homeboy too. Uh, Bojangles, of course, lived off of Pine, uh -huh. you know, um, but Bojangles was the homeboy. He, he was, a lot of them guys, uh, back in them days, they was, they was a uh, force to be reckoned with. You know, they was no punk. They was, they was a beast. They did what you know, what was meant to be done. You know, uh, uh, again, like I said, I, I don't, I don't know what people really want to hear. I don't know if they want me to sit here and say, oh, such and such killed, such and such, and no, this no, and no, that. No, 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 not, not yeah, you guys. I'm yeah. saying, I just see in this comment section sometimes people are saying this, like you guys didn't ask her the right questions or whatever. Nobody. At least no real gangsters kiss and tell. You know, no. I don't know what the wanksters do, but real gangsters. So don't what kiss we and like tell. to do is highlight the human side of these individuals right. and the love that you have from them and right. the love that they show yeah, you. Because Daryl Savage lived on Golden, which is yeah, in yeah. my name. He did. <laughs> you know, he did. and then Lug and Jug yeah. lived on yeah. Willow. Yeah. You know what I'm they saying? Did. So right in the heart. They you know did. what I mean? So it just it speaks for itself for really the heart that these individuals had in the. And let's be honest, Cynthia. In the seventies, it wasn't easy being the blood or pirate. Oh no, it wasn't. Not in the seventies. We 70s. was outnumbered. 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 Yeah. We was outnumbered, but that's what made us unique as well. Uh -huh. We was outnumbered, uh -huh. but it was no punks. You know, right. you couldn't right. be a, a a blood back then and and be like it is now. You know, you you would be <laughs> lost. You know. Um, and if you had to say something about your brother. What would oh, you say? That's my dog. That's my dog. <laughs> I, I, I love my brother. My brother was never, never no punk. I remember when... Uh, and he was the younger than all the guys I just met. Yeah, yeah. He, he um, 
I remember when I wasn't talking to Putin no more and Putin performed out in front of my house. I know when Putin first was trying to talk to me, it was me, Sandra Martin and Trudy, you know, and and I tell my brother like, this boy keep bothering me. And my brother coming like, what's up? I'm going to go look for him. You know, my brother just, he was brought up not being a punk. Like I said, my father and my stepdad was fighters. So, and then my brother went fishing hunting all his life up until he started banging or whatever, but he stayed fishing hunting. So he was no joke from nowhere, not from shooting or from the fist, you know? So, uh -huh. but that was my dog too, though, that we stayed in trouble together. You know what I like about you? You don't ride your brother's reputation. Right. And you always give him his respect. Right. So the love is so clear to see how much you love your brother. Yeah, I do, I and do. I, I really do. I respect that. Right, right. My mom too. I I go to bat for you know, I I, I can't whip everybody and especially now, but I'm you know, I go to bat for him, you know. Right. So a lot of these people in the comment section, they speak on bartender, but I don't think they really know who Bartender was as an individual, and I don't know if we got his picture out, but. I don't know if we got his picture out. But go ahead, I'm listening to you. Just from your experience and the times that you spent with Bartender, just give us some words about the Bartender, and, and if you can, explain that name. Um, how he got the name Bartender, I don't know. Bartender was a. Uh, uh, a pretty boy, you know, we had the girls going crazy. Uh, uh, bartender, of course, you've seen his name everywhere because he hit up on the walls a lot, you know. Yeah, he was a, a yeah. BDR, yeah. he was a beast. Yeah, but I, I know I've seen in conversation before, they say she barely speak on bartender. I'm telling you, bartender was a pretty boy. The girls, you know, they was in, they liked the bartender. Uh, but like the rest of them, he was no punk. Of course, we had homeboys that was about that life. I, I wouldn't. I don't put him in a category with them, uh, like Savage and Volcano. Them was beasts. You know, bartender wasn't no punk. You have homeboys. You know, you might have somebody say, "Oh, uh, such and such was." They was about that life, but then you had the ones that you know, that you had to be careful of. You right. know, well, bartender, he was cool. He was a homeboy, and the, and they hung at the house because, of course, we lived across the street from the park. So, um, they wanted to eat you know my mom like I said she cook you know whatever you know but and then my brother you know they was my brother was hanging with them you know so uh a bartender he was a he was a homeboy again I don't know where where he got the name bartender from because he wasn't making no drinks I was let me ask this before we cook um bartender one day I told bartender I said bartender you sure you ain't kidding in the silvers? You look <laughs> yeah, like one of your family members. He really did. He really did. <laughs> he really did. Yes. Yes. Yes.